Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Hi, I'm Melinda, Pastor Moore's daughter. Welcome to our broadcast. Relax and enjoy our teaching. I was reading a little editorial that was given to me. And uh, the big thing is boldness. And I had a verse come to my mind. I was trying to look it up there. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. Amen. My wife is probably the boldest person I've ever met. <laughs> She'll speak the word whether you want to hear it or not. Amen. <laughs> and I guess that's all right. But stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders. So this is going to be our year for faith. Amen. Praise God. For the next 12 months, you and Jesus are going to walk together. Amen. You're going to learn more about him. You're going to learn more about how to do what he's called us all to do. So 2019 is going to be a good, good time for you and the Lord as we walk together. Can you say amen? amen. In that walk, you can expect a lot of supernatural stuff to happen. I don't know why. If, even people that are full of the Holy Ghost, there's a fearful there of the supernatural. He's a supernatural God. So expect him to do some supernatural things around you and for you, but the beautiful part is through you yes. in 2019. Many, many years ago, somewhere around 1973, 1972, 1974, somewhere in that time period, I was pastoring a Baptist church and this young lady, I knew she had heart problem. This young lady came forward and she said, if you'll anoint, I said, if you lay your hands upon me, Jesus is going to heal me. Now, I've never done that before. I had never laid my hands upon a person to be healed. Because we in the BAPTIST church didn't practice that. And uh, I was startled, but I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I knew in the scripture she was asking me to do something that Jesus said I could do. But I'd never done it before. So I stood there and I looked at her. And I said, uh, what's the word? I run. <laughs> You go to heaven, you'll never forget that word, Ira. I said, Ira, Ira, Ira. She said, well, you believe the Bible, don't you? I said, yes, ma'am, I do. And uh, she said, well, why don't you practice? I said, yes, ma'am, I will. I laid my hands upon her. You know, God healed her. And it wasn't necessarily my faith. I was just doing what the Bible said a believer can do. I knew she was taking a lot of medications. She came back. That was on a Sunday. She came back either Wednesday or the next Sunday. said, well, the doctor dismissed me. God's healed me. I said, praise the Lord. Now, you don't realize what that did to me. I am a person that's never done that before, even though I believe in Jesus. But after that, I found out that I could lay my hands upon people and God would heal. And that broke me off into a brand new relationship with Jesus Christ. And I thank God for it. Can you say amen? John chapter 14, I want to read a couple of verses to you this morning. Notice what he says in verse 12. 
most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, this is the key, believes in me. The works that I do, he will do also. Have you read this before? Are you doing the works that he did? A lot of preaching today. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. How about that? And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Verse 14. Verse 13 says, whatsoever you ask in my name, that I will do. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. It's just a matter of, of reading this, believing this, and doing this. Yeah. Read it, and believe it, and do it. It's easy to read. And sometimes it's sort of easy to believe it. But then to do it is another question we have to deal with. Will you do it? Jesus says. So this is a something I just wanted to lay to you. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about it. We didn't deal with it much. But there are four spiritual things I'm going to do today. First of all, it's the word of the Lord. I've given you a little bit of the word. They shall be more coming. Then there's laying on of hands by the pastor and the elders. As we lay hands upon our sister for ministry. Then there's the anointing of oil. We will anoint her in the name of Jesus Christ. And then those in the congregation who desire to be anointed for a fresh anointing. We will put a fresh anointing upon you before you leave today. Amen. So this is the story we're, we're involved with. In Mark 16, I read that all followers of Jesus are called to a healing ministry. Mark 16. All followers of Jesus Christ have been called in a healing ministry. Verse 15. Verse 14. Later he appeared to the leaven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief. These were his disciples. They've been with him for three, three and a half years. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they did not believe that those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes, here's this big word again. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Divine protection. Can you say amen? amen. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then... After the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, set down at the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the words through the accompanying signs, Amen. Amen. Now look at your hands, my brother and my sister, if you would please. Look at your hands. Don't look at me. Look at your hands. You 
You have the power of God in your hands. Amen. To heal yourself and others. With the life energy, it's the energy of God that flows through you and out of your hands. You have healing power, healing energy of God in your hands. Not Benny Hinn, you do. You have God's healing power or energy in your hands. Thank God for that. He's the source of that. He gave it to you. And if he says it's there, it's there. Now you can have it and never use it. But it's yours. That's how we stand here 76 years. Had good opportunities to take a flight. Decided to stay. Nothing wrong with going to heaven. But I want to go in my time. Blessed be the Lord. See, I have healing power in my hands. Do you believe that? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? These signs will follow those that believe in my name. They'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will recover. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now some have a special calling to do these things. That's beyond the ordinary. Some have a greater anointing to do these things. Some are actually born with what we call, and the scriptures call, the gifts of healing. Born with that. Now, if you don't know whether you have that or not, we're going to try to help you discover it and develop it and use it for the glory of God. Are you okay with that? Yes. So some are born with that stuff. Some are not born with that stuff. But you don't, it, you don't have to be born with it to use it. There are a lot of people who use this stuff and don't have gifts of healing. They just believe God's word and do it. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? I call it a healing touch. It's, I think it's my Lord's favorite way of ministering to the sick. He'd touch them. Sometimes he'd just touch them. And sometimes he would touch them and then speak a word. He'd speak a word along with the touch. But I'm going to tell you, <laughs> this will probably surprise you, you never find Jesus praying for a sick person. You mean never? I mean never. Does that mean we can't? No, I didn't say that. I'm just saying my Lord, my mentor, he never prayed for a sick person. There are several ways he ministered to the sick, but praying was not one of them. He left to touch. He would touch them. Sometimes that's all he needed was a touch from the Lord. And sometimes he would add a word to it. Be healed. Simple stuff. He'd speak, wouldn't pray. He would speak. Do you realize that there were times that Jesus spent all night in prayer to the Father? Can you imagine that? All night, talking to the Father. Yet, he had no sin. He was a perfect human being. Nothing to separate him from the love of the Father God. Jesus would be very quick to tell you, it's the Father that's doing the work now. 
not me, it's the Father. So he would spend all night talking to the Father. I've tried that two hours, that morning stuff, you know. Get up and pray two hours. Read a couple of scriptures, put your cross on. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't work at the Moore household. <laughs> if God had to wait for me to pray two hours in the morning to get anybody healed, the whole world would be sick. <laughs> I'd go to sleep praying. Then I feel guilty. <clears throat> then I've got to repent. Father, forgive me. Dear God, I couldn't keep my eyes open ten minutes. Forgive me, Father. But after my ordination, things changed. I mean, they changed quickly and they changed easily. It wasn't any longer about what I was doing. It's about what he wanted to do through me. And that's the beautiful part about being ordained because something is imparted to you when that takes place. There's a fresh anointing that comes upon you when that takes place. Those of you that have the seer gift, you see better now. Have the hearing gift, you hear better now. You mean, that's right, I'm talking about the anointing that destroys yokes. That the anointing comes upon you, you that are leadership, will be laying hands on our sister, that anointing is gonna go through you into her, her body. She will leave here today with a greater anointing than she has when she's come in here this morning. Amen. She'll see things clearer. She'll hear things clearer. Amen. She'll know things differently than she does now. Yes. There is nothing greater than the calling of God upon your life. Amen. Many are called if you are chosen. I wrestle with my calling, making good money. Had a family to feed. I'd go to Dr. Dubos. I said, Doc, I tell you, I'm just sick. What's wrong, Vernon? I'm just sick. Where are you sick at? All over. He put me in the hospital three or four times there in about four, five or six months trying to find out what's wrong with me. One day I told him. I said, Jesus has called me to preach the gospel. He said, why the heck didn't you tell me this six months ago? <laughs> but I remember the day I made my full surrender. I was in a big Baptist church in Charlotte. Uh, it's on the left going up 85. I don't know the name of it. I forgot it. What is it? You're right. That's where it was. North side. And a young man I heard in there was a missionary. He was preaching about what God was doing around the world. I've seen Louis Hill. That's the only one I've seen so far. You know what? When he gave the invitation, I was the first one to hit the altar. I said, God, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. I'll do anything you want me to do. You better watch what you say. <laughs> I got up and left there, not knowing what was going on. I know I've been wrestling with this thing. I know what my wife expected my check to be every week. And I've just stepped off into full-time ministry, $100 a week. I was making over $400 a week. 
My wife cried. I cried. Thought we'd lose everything we got. But you know something? God honors the calling. I surrendered to that. And I can tell you, I've never regretted that. All the days of my life. God's always provided for Barb and I. He's provided healing. He's provided financial miracles. I could tell you on and on and on. How God has met our need. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is a good life. He'll do this for anybody. But there's just something special about that calling. I could never get away from that. My supervisor kept calling me in. Bernard, what's going on? You're talking about leaving. Why are, you, why are you leaving? He could not understand the calling of God upon my life. But I could after five or six months. After, you know, I saw Dr. Dubose recently. He's not as healthy as he used to be. He said, I knew something was going on with you. I said, you said that right. There was something big going on with me, inside of me. Because I couldn't see myself stepping out in ministry. Could not see that. But you know what? I forgot who my traveling companion was. And I had to learn how to deal with him and work with him. Then I got in ministry of the Holy Spirit. I had to, brand new now. Holy Spirit is a lot different than Jesus. But anyway, we made it. Those of you who have a healing touch in your life or, or even interested in divine healing, we'd like to help you discover and develop that gift. Any way we can do our part, we'll certainly help you in any way we can. That's your birthright as a child of God. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Some of you might have been born with that gift of healing. It's really, you're just a channel. You with me? You're a channel for divine energy, person of the Holy Spirit, divine energy to flow through you into that other person. That's what divine healing is about. Yeah. Giving that person something they need. So this comes down now to the gifts and the talents, whatever it is you have, that's what you use in the kingdom of God to help build up the kingdom. You use that. If you're sitting down upon it, you're not using it. The church goes lagging because you don't use your gift and your talent that God has given you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Acts 13, please. We'll end here. Now, in the church, there was at Antioch, there were certain prophets, teachers, then some of them are named there. Verse 2 says, as they ministered to the Lord. As they ministered to the church, as they were ministering to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, probably through a tongue, interpretation, I'm not, I don't know how he manifested himself to do this, he said, now separate to me. See, to me. Amen. Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I've called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid the hands on them, they sent them away. Next verse, please. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to these cities and ministry they did there. The key thing is, there were things the Holy Spirit said. Separate me. Separate me. Separate me. Barnabas and Simon, or Saul, to the work which I have called them. I like to ask people that. What's God called you to do? What has God called you to do? 
me ask this side over here. What's God called you to do? Do you feel like you're doing that? That's what you'll give an account to God for. I can't give an account for, for Sam's ministry. I'll have to give an account of my own. What is he calling me to do? What am I doing about that? Am I creating fruit in that area? Did you know, as long as I've been in the pastor over 50 years now, it's hard to find a man that's actually called by God to do something. And go another step further, it's hard to find a man who's called of God to do something to be doing it. Man, I guess I just had too much fear of God in me. I had to do the calling. I had to do the calling. I had to pay the price. Going back to adult night school, getting my high school diploma, starting to garden a web when I was 30 years old, going to Bob Jones University, going on to the Baptist Seminary in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Going to the seminary in Charlotte, the Reformed Presbyterian, finishing up with Cummings Theological Seminary with a Master of Divinity. Was it easy? Mm -mm. No. No. The Lord said, I want you to go to that Carolina School of Broadcasting in Charlotte. I said, really? This is what I'm saying to my sister this morning. From here to there, it's a long way. You'll never know how God is going to use you and where he's going to use you. You have a lot of questions and most of them he won't answer you until the time. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, our website. Our Lord is building his kingdom. Join us in helping our Lord harvesting souls for his kingdom. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church. Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Visit our website, www.christthekingshelby.org and check us out on Facebook and YouTube.